Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. For almost 30 years, I brought you a message that to some of you is difficult. Difficult because it flies in the face of that what you think. Or flies in the face of that what you've been told. Or what you, what you think is supposed to be. And what we have told you for all these years slowly is when the real truth starts to come out it's not going to sit well with those who thought they knew what they thought they knew we also gave you some axioms of consciousness and we'll say them again consciousness intelligence intellect has a ceiling a fool does not know they're a fool, dear ones. A human does not know they're limited. If you ask an intellectual who is so proud of their high thinking, they will say, I am capable of thinking anything. And the answer is, no, you're not. human being you live in four dimensions this is how you live we said this before even science tells you that atomic structure has at least 11 dimensions more like 27 depending upon the physicist you speak of so if the atomic structure of your body has at least 11 and you're living in four you might think to yourself well there's a lot we don't know yet and you'd be right your intellect your consciousness your intelligence is all in four dimensions and you can't really think in a multi-dimensional way you think you can but you can't and we've said this before you're in black and white and God is in color and if an angel comes down to you and starts talking about the beautiful reds and greens and blues and rainbows, you have no idea what the angel is talking about. But you want to know and you think you know and so you interpret it in shades of gray. But you don't know color. You have no idea. That is the metaphor for a four-dimensional creature. Even with high consciousness, when you speak to that which is a multi-dimensional creator all of this to say to you I want you to use some spiritual logic there's a lot you don't know and then there would be those because humans are so linear that says well I'm interested to know them would you please write them in a list and the answer is, when you become multidimensional, dear ones, there is no list. Somebody looks in your eyes who you love dearly, and you have maybe have experienced this, and they, and they look in your eyes and hold your hands and they say, I love you with all my heart. Ooh. <laughs> and you turn to them and say, could you make a list? <laughs> Why is that funny? Because you know it's impossible. Because love prevails in almost a multi-dimensional form. Can you imagine the strength, the power, the majesty of the love of God compared to a human being, an animal? Can you even begin to fathom that's color and you can't see it and you don't know it and what you do instead is you take that which you do know which is your consciousness and you do your best to then paste it upon the Almighty this is the mind of God this is what God wants this is what God thinks this is what God allows all of these things that's your perception as a human to that beautiful color that you can't even see what I'm telling you dear 
ones is there's so much love here and you don't really really understand it what is it about the human being that says I must understand it before I accept it so the person who stands in front of you and says I love you with all my heart are you gonna say not until you get the list and believe it and you don't and instead you feel it with your heart and the two of you intertwine you intertwine in a way that is so multi-dimensional and minds and hearts and consciousness has become one and that's falling in love is it too astonishing or far out or inappropriate for you to believe that there is a creator who can look in your eyes and say I love you so many humans will look back at that and they'll say can you be more specific I need because I, that's not what I've been taught you're too big you're too grand you're too wonderful and, and I'm just a human so let's talk about humans for a moment I love to talk about humans because dear ones humans are a piece of my family every master who's ever sat in front of you told you that God is inside you everyone then it's been up to the human beings to then interpret what that means and how far it goes instead of saying it's oh, astonishing I'm a piece of God that means I can do anything with my partner the creative source but that's not what happens is it what makes the difference in the animal kingdom between you for instance and a horse an elephant a pig a dog cat they're all intelligent animals you know but you are the most intelligent those who think of these things and relate to these things and write books about these things will say well the human being is so intelligent they have an intellect and that intellect then gives them that which is apart from any other animal in in the kingdom of the planet and that is you can analyze yourself you can ponder your own consciousness that's how smart you are and and it occurs to you you came from somewhere else they're that smart now I'm gonna refute that and talk a little bit about it intelligence has no relationship to the pondering of the love of God intellect has no relationship to the pondering of the love of God consciousness does you are the only animal with a consciousness who knows the Creator and all of this stems back to an event that almost every spiritual organization or non-organization on this planet claims to have happened in your society your culture you'll call it the Garden of Eden that's not what others call it but there was always a crux of time not that long ago where an angelic source came to this planet and gave you free choice and if you follow the the illustrations and the intuitions of those who drew that event even in the Garden of Eden you had two beautiful humans looking just like you not cavemen not animals it was you looking just like you do today not that long ago and you were imbued with free choice the Garden of Eden is the metaphor of the earth the humans who stood in front of the angels the metaphor of men and women and the angelic source is the metaphor for God the Creator who came to this place and changed you now scientists have notated 
something changed in your DNA 200,000 years ago what a coincidence they don't relate it to a creation story but humans all have 23 pairs of chromosomes instead of 24 like everyone below you on the biological chain and I've talked about that before and I'm not going to talk about that now I'm just going to say that this is common to almost all humanity, all religions, all belief systems, something happened. And you now have free choice. So what was that something? How far back can you go in history to take a look at what humanity thinks about the Creator? Does a dog think about the Creator? No. You say, well, a dog is not smart enough. Dear ones, it's not smart that we're talking about. It's the consciousness of knowing that you're not alone. You came from somewhere. Oh, but there's more. There's a consciousness of knowing not only were you created by something bigger, there's something inside you that's multidimensional called a soul. Now that doesn't have anything to do with intelligence or intellect. It's self-awareness. When did this begin? I'll tell you, at the moment the angel touched you, human being, and gave you free choice and gave you God within in every single cell, that you could start to think about it. There's something bigger than me. 80% of this planet believes in the afterlife, dear ones. You think that's because they're smart? You think that's because they're intellectual? How old is humanity? How far can we go back to check this out? If you ask a sociologist, say, well, you can maybe 10,000, 11,000 years, but there's nobody around that you can interview. Did you know that there are those who have a culture that is 40,000 years old? And today they're doing exactly what they did 40,000 years ago. They know their lineage, they know their family, they know their tribe, they know how they lived then, because it's how they live today. 40,000 years. Is this conjecture, Cryon? <laughs> no, it is proven. In the last three years with DNA research, and I'm talking about the Aborigine in Australia, Sociologists, why are you sitting on your hands? Why don't you go interview them, ask them some questions? Because they believe today what they believed then. How can you exist on a continent for 40,000 years and not have overpopulation? Where'd you get your food? How did you solve the problems that a society today that's only supposed to be a quarter of your age are unsolvable? How did that happen? And yet no one's asking them, not really. And the reason is because their answers are multidimensional. What do they believe? What did they believe? What does a 40,000 year old human being on this planet believe? They know because it never changed. Here's what they believe. There's a creator and there's a soul and there's an afterlife. And you find this something self-awareness self-evident they have the stories to this day they have the stories of who they believe created them a greater source and what is the positioning of the source and this is critical tell us about the source aborigine you've been there for 40,000 years tell us about your source and they'll say the source is filled with compassion and love now tell me about your source, dear ones. Because most of the culture here, you say, tell me about your source. They'll say, untouchable, judgmental, angry. You better do it right. Where does compassion and love fit into that? I would like to introduce you to the de-evolvement of love. Why don't you go back to the original source and start asking them? So let's go back. Let's only go back 
maybe seven, eight thousand years. Let's, let's talk to the, the first organized spiritual system called Hinduism. That's the first recorded one in this civilization. There were others before that. We told you that you'll find someday. But let's just look at them. What do they believe? <laughs> they want oneness with everything. Did you notice that the Hindus have no prophet? They have helpers. They have little gods that help. The god of this and that and that. So do you. Sometimes they're plastic at your home. Sometimes they hang from your car. So do you. But they have no prophet. So where was their God? What was the epitome of their God? Who did they worship? And they said, they worship all that is. Oneness with the earth. Oneness with each other. An allied consciousness of love that is worldwide and human-wide and beautiful. And you can look in the eyes of any other human being and you can say, Namaste, I love you. The God in me honors the God in you, every single human being, not just Hindus. Did you know that? And if you ask them, well, where are your rules? They'll say the same thing the Aborigines did. They'll say they're self-evident. There's a right way to live. There's a wrong way to live. It's self-evident, isn't it? You treat others with love and compassion. Isn't that self-evident? Those are the rules. And they're not on tablet anywhere. And there's no consequences if you don't do it because, you see, we got free choice. Do you ever wonder about why a God would come down and give you free choice and then immediately judge you on your choice? <laughs> Does that really make sense to you? Well, that is the prevailing belief today. What humans have done, yet again, and I tell you this, is they've taken the highest consciousness that they can think of as a human and placed it on the Almighty. Therefore, God has a human mind. Therefore, there's wars in heaven. Therefore, there's got to be fallen angels and corruption. Therefore, there has to be this and that. There has to be judgment. And there has to be, and there has to be. That's not God, dear ones. That's, that's black and white. God's in color. There are those who would hear this message and not believe it and want to shut the door right way. And before you shut the door, let me just ask you, why are you afraid of love? That's what you're looking at. You're afraid of love. It's too great, isn't it? God is too grand. Therefore, you better not touch him. Don't go there. Burn your hand if you go there. Do you know I tell you? God's inside. Did you know that that hand of God is reaching out for you all the time, ready for you to take it? Because you're a piece of it. Every master, you're a piece of it. Why would you be separate? You're a piece of it. Let me tell you a story. I want to tell you a story about a great man. And I'm talking about a man among men who was compassionate and beautiful and had a kind heart. And he would stop and help everybody, even from a time he was a child he saw compassion in everyone and he was brought up through his organization and he did the best he could he was almost a saint in that organization everything he did was perfect and according to the rules he went to those places where he confessed. He went to those places where, where he could talk to God through, through an associate who could talk to God. He did all these things correctly, and he was a great man. There was probably no higher consciousness man than this, and he loved God. And then he died. And now we see him awakening without a body, and all he can see is light. And with these metaphorical, metaphysical, multidimensional eyes, all he sees is love and light and compassion. And it surrounds him.
and he weeps with a joy when a voice that he hears somehow without ears says welcome home and somehow he sees all of his friends even some of the friends that are still on earth he sees their souls in this soup of light a light that's so so bright it sings to him and he sees nothing but love and they all hold his hands and they sing and they say welcome home and that part of him says where's where's the judgment where are the things I was told that are so careful or the step on a crack you know you don't do that where, where are all these things I was told about and then he made the realization and then he saw it I've been a good human and I've spent all my life in the dark there was light all around me I took as much of it as I thought I could but I was in the dark the whole time you're alive you're the ones listening to this and so I'm saying why are you afraid of love it's simply too grand perhaps your your box is your box because of what people told you it should be or that you have judged God with a human brain and you're living in black and white and color is around you saying why don't you talk to me why don't you take my hand you'd be shocked you'd be surprised what happens when the human being starts to talk to their innate which is part of your soul which is on the other side of the veil and healing occurs and spontaneous remission occurs do you think that would occur if this message was wrong do you that is the point common sense spiritual logic says that there's a God who loves you and is with you and you can communicate with in love and a consciousness that you have which intermingles with the Creator which is just waiting to change your life we've given you information about this for years consciousness of love and compassion will start to drop anxiety and you'll live longer A human being ages for several reasons. Let's talk about the first one. It expects to. Number two, how old are you supposed to be? How long will you be on the planet? Well, give me a minute. Let's Google it. <laughs> Where is the self-empowerment here? for you to say I am in charge of my cellular structure I know there's a lifespan I'm not stupid but this lifespan of mine is not going to be in the hands of a culture who tells me how old I am and how I'm supposed to feel instead I am light and I'm going to feel alive and young for a long time I would like to tell you epigenetics is real and that is the cells listen and they react to what you say when you believe it and when you cognize things and so it's a bad habit dear ones for you then to buy into what others tell you about how long or how it works or if you cannot heal a disease because it normally doesn't happen that way until you start talking to your cells and you find out my disease is disappearing and you start saying all I've done is is something internal oh it's not internal because you're a piece of God the universe knows when you start healing yourself dear ones is that too big for you are you afraid of love are you afraid to reach out and touch what you've been told you can't touch that's the message and it always will be this planet is going to start seeing compassion and a change of not only attitude but the young people are going to bring in some things 
the bias itself of the old energy of how things used to work compared to how they will work is starting to shift a little a little we told you it would when you pass 2012 it's starting to happen so tonight I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to give it to you in five sections and we'll call it what's wrong with the earth as said by others mm. and we'll give you some things to think about and everything we're going to talk about is going to be current and we're going to invite you to listen in color if such a thing is impossible to go beyond what you've been taught and don't write it down just listen and you might be surprised because I'm going to give you some solutions or at least some things to think about that will make you understand that this planet is going in a direction nobody expected slowly and against all odds and fighting old energies and old biases there's hope here there's hope because light is starting to show in places there never was light before consciousness is starting to get out of black and white think of these things for now God is love and you are part of God look in each other's eyes and think of the namaste the God in me loves and sees the God in you honors and so it is